Hello. In this video, we will take a look on how to create a Docker container from an image. The image is self-written using uh, already known Linux commands and Linux software that is basically used day to day for each web server. I had a need to create this image because I have several domains that I want to sell and uh, basically I could do like create a virtual machine, install Apache and create uh, several virtual hosts that's around 20 or more virtual hosts would be. I can automate them with GitHub Actions like to have like reusable pipeline just specify the loop of the domain names and it would do everything automatically for myself but I wanted to do it in Docker. Why? Because in Docker I could control them more and once the domain name is sold I could actually remove the container uh, from or stop the container. Basically uh, this docker image was meant for some other project but uh, we will be reusing it so that I don't need to write something from zero. Yes, I can remove the unneeded parts, but why bother? Because they can come in handy for the PHP, let's say, functionalities or something like that. This image will be running on Alpine latest. It will be using PHP 8.2 version. Here we show the environment that PHP is PHP version. It will have user alters. We will be using root to actually uh, install all the software inside the Docker image. First thing will be updated repositories. Secondly, we will install nano, curl, zip, busybox suite, and dcron. Dcron I need for some functionalities that I will be using inside the containers so that they execute automatically. Here we'll install Apache and Apache utilities. Do some custom configurations inside the Apache. Here we will install the PHP and all the PHP modules. These modules plus minus are what every day to do day website uses. So without these modules, some websites like WordPress or your self developed websites will maybe not work. The modules, they are not the whole because there are even more modules inside the PHP libraries that uh, based on your website needs and functionalities, you can add or remove. Here's some specific configuration for the PHP, like uh, don't display errors, increased upload size, post size, session cookies I have set to true, max input size I have changed, memory limits, input vars, vars uh, actually a very interesting thing that uh, once we had one project where it was over 10,000 like entries that PHP tried to enter in, into MySQL database and it failed and uh, well basically we needed to change those input vars to increase the limit of how many they can actually be stored. And here's the logging for PHP. Of course, not all the things will be moved from this because as I mentioned, this is for a different project was the image, but we will reuse it, reuse it. So I guess we can actually uh, comment out the non-needed things. So let's move them actually out. This one we don't need. This one we will not need. Not need. Not need. Not need. Actually, it could create the backup directory. Yes, it can remove the index.html so that we don't need it. And the user will not apply it. Here we will have time zones. Uh, allow so the Docker container can have a customized time zone. And in my case, it will be Riga. And the CMD for running cron and HTTPD uh, so that they run without stopping and our working directory will be double 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 so that once we open our docker container we are in this D 
directory. But now we also add copy. Uh, let's do like this web to w. Here I will um, specify that uh, the website that we will be using, so that it's already inside the Docker image, so that it just puts it inside the backup. Once it will be, actually we don't need to put it in backup, we can put it straight away into hit the dots. Basically it will put inside the HT dots on the website content. Uh, basically, the website template I have downloaded for from Envo Elements Environments. You can search them in Google as they have a lot of website templates and also they have a lot of uh, Envato elements and also a lot of video footages. This is not sponsored by them. This video is not sponsored by anybody. This is what I'm creating and showing that I'm using. So once we have the image code prepared, we can go into our Docker. Let me navigate to the home. Let's go to SRV.scar folder. And now we can create new folder domains. Domain. Okay, domain. And now we have an empty folder. So let's create a new folder web. There will be the all the website fun, template and stuff like that that will be copied inside the docker. Let's create docker file, put it all in, save, control X, ingwek, control M. And now we need to actually move those files. So I will move them off the screen so that I can get them in. Because I have downloaded them and we will move them in with the terminal. This, this, <coughs> okay, I can show you. I uh, will be using SCP. Move all these files to the SRV Docker domain web yep okay i got one entry so that can move the folders as well and now as we can see the files are starting to move to our web folder here you can see them. And now I think I made a bit of mistake, so let me remove them because as they will be in double double, it will not be in HD dots, it will be a bit issuey to move them. So yep, here you can see they're downloading. Actually uploading. So now that files have been sent, we can now let's build our Docker image. Let's say to Docker, build us an image. Don't use any cache. Use this file for the information. Tag the image as as, as a domain sale latest. And let's put it at the end. If everything works correctly, then we shouldn't have any errors and the image should be built properly. So we are now waiting and it should end up pretty fast. And we can see that our image is built with the image ID and the naming. The naming is the tag that we gave. So now I have prepared something like this. Let's execute the image. Basically, we're not using HTTPS because the subdomain that we are using, portainer.walters.eu, it is a 
14 it is a cloudflare subdomain that i have added in cloudflare and if you would like to run it with https then i would need to download the certificates install them and stuff like that that will take a bit time for this demonstration we will use without so we are saying we want it detached we don't want the image when it run so that we are inside the container we want it to run silently we'll be forwarding the ports will be having the name domain cell test if something goes wrong the image should restart also when you restart your linux or docker environment it automatically should bring up the container our host name this is the where i pointing docker socket we will monitor logs this is for certificates but it basically is not needed so we can also remove it this is virtual host for configurations and this is our image name so let's copy it and paste it in and we see that the image basically should be up and running we can check with the following command what's happening with it and we see it's up eight seconds just for safety let's check it again because i have had scenarios when the image shows 10 12 or 20 seconds but actually it is at 25th second it has died for some reason because it's starting up all the things that we have asked like web server cron and the other the other so if you are checking it's up 37 seconds so it looks basically good let's have a refresh and yeah it's showing me HTTPS as browser my, my browser Safari wants HTTPS for some reason and still wants so we will open incognito mode we'll open incognito mode and let's try HTTP and here we see the result only for some reason the website isn't looking great as it should be so but that's not the docker image fault that is some css files are not properly working inside the index that we put in but we can actually try index 5 html there was as well something like that This one looks like it will be something, if it will not be stuck. It looks like stucky. Okay, let's try index 4. Crappy. Index 3 also crappy. Index 2 is also crappy. Index 5. Okay, basically I understand where is the issue, as that let's say the template that i have downloaded it has some css pointing places wrong so i will need to fix that but that's pretty easy fix nothing serious once i will be finishing the fix basically i will be doing like this stalker stop domain sale test and i will add don't know how they are called actually in english i always forget <laughs> double double no not double double but i know in music industry they say fat blah 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 but okay uh rm uh, domain docker remove domain domain sale test and oh i didn't find something like that okay let me copy it so that be more for sure I have entered correctly so basically this is how I will be stopping and removing the image and uh, well I can do any changes in the docker docker file uh, I can do any changes in the docker file and afterwards I can build a new image also, if I will do those changes in the HTML files, I can also afterwards build a new image with the correct HTML files. What will happen to old image? Well, you can remove it. If you want, you can do like, 
it was like EMG, I think. Mm. Images, yeah, Docker images. You can find your image here and you can basically delete it either using the name or the image ID. To delete it, you just need to type this command. Instead of ID, you can post the name and, sorry, I, I'm a bit today. See, now the image is deleted. But if you, for example, uh, do some changes like I will do in the HTML file or the Docker file and build a new image, it will automatically overwrite the old image. So yeah, this is something that you can do. And if you want a new version of image so that you have the old one saved as well, then you can change from the latest, let's say to V1 or V2, and it will build you a new image and the tag will be domain cell. Um, semicom v1 v2 or whatever you will specify for it so this is how you can easily build the images and why i like to use docker because well in docker the containers are separated each from other so each container can run multiple applications i like the docker because i can run some things some specific things that i don't want to rent vps's because let's say i have a python some libraries, Python scripts, uh, PHP websites, uh, some other things. And they all would require me to actually purchase VPSs. But with Docker, I can host them on one VPS because each container can, one can run .NET, one can run SQL, one can run uh, Apache, one can run MySQL. You can, one can run some specific software, one can run uh, Python. So with Docker, you have the flexibility to run whatever you want in the container infrastructure and to move the containers it's also pretty easy you just take your image move it to the new host run deploy and you will not be having any issues let's say like installing a new server sometimes you can forget some kind of uh, configuration or you can forget some kind of module that you need so yeah this is the b best way to actually go and the more better way is to use github for version control it can be gitlab bitbucket whatever you like the best and inside use the automation pipelines because with them you can achieve even more you have source control and you have more let's say you don't need even to connect to the server to run everything so i hope this video was enjoyable so please, if you have any comments, ask me in the comments section. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. Subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.